Uh, yes, Mayor, I would ask you to turn the meeting over briefly uh, to the uh, young lady seated at the council table. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Can you introduce yourself, please? Good evening. Uh, my name is Kelly Carey. I'm from the firm De Francisco Bateman. We are the Township's Redevelopment Council. I'm here this evening regarding a couple of things on your agenda. Um, four ordinances that are being introduced for first reading and four that are on for final reading and adoption. They all involve the, the Colgate redevelopment site, as I think we all refer to it, although they do have other formal names. Um, first, I'd like to talk about the ordinances that are for final adoption, 25-18 and 26-18. These ordinances are intended to provide minor amendments to the redevelopment agreement and the financial agreement which is JMFRD, Affordable Housing, in the New York LLC. Basically, it's the affordable housing component of the, of the Colgate redevelopment project. Um, the board had, had approved the original agreements on this project back in October of 2017, but since then, the redeveloper went in front of the planning board and sought, actually went to seek their site plan and subdivision approvals. And during that process, it was agreed that they were going to add additional affordable housing units. So instead of this project, having 36 affordable housing units, the township is going to have the benefit of six, 66 affordable housing units. In order to do that, um, there were certain changes that had to be made to the site plan and the subdivision and the plats and all the agreements that had been already in place to put this forward. Um, the board, the, t the committee has already approved a redevelopment plan amendment uh, back in March of 2018, resolution 8-18. We've already approved these changes in sort of the formal redevelopment plan and now we have to amend all the documents that were previously signed and agreed to because we have changes. Um, as far as the affordable housing, it's the main change is the addition of an extra story to include those additional 30 units for the um, market rate residential section, which is under first reading tonight. The, the main change is a lot line change. So if you can picture the property as sort of a, an unusual shape, the line between the lots has shifted just slightly. And what that does is everything we referred to in the original agreement cites to the subdivision and the lot line, and we move that. So it's not a big change, but it's a change that affects all of the agreements. And then for the commercial portion, which also is on for first reading this evening, um, there's a slight adjustment to the office building. It was kind of triangular one corner to start off. And then there are some changes to the parking area and the circulation plan, and again, tiny little sliver of the one lot is moving from that lot to the other. So we don't have big changes here, but we do have all the agreements that cite to the prior version, and we now need to amend them to cite to the correct documents. Um, I don't want to spend too much of your time. I know you've gone through all this before. If there, maybe you just ask if there are any questions, then I can address it that way. Anybody from the day have a question? The three areas then are the commercial, the market, and the affordable housing. Correct. So here, the documents before us amend those three areas in ways that are needed um, based on what we wrote on this spring. Correct, correct. And the planning board's already approved them, and you've already approved the changes to the overall plan. Now we just have to fix the documents to be in line with what's been already made. Anybody from the public yet? No, sorry. Thank you. We'll go ahead when we get to the uh, when we get to the public commentary. You can ask her any questions. Uh, of, of when? Okay. All right, Mr. Mills. Yes. Four uh, we'll do uh, uh, well, three of them. I understand. Thirty eighteen is moved. So I'll read three by title. All of these will be further considered. Uh, 31. Correct agenda? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. So these will further be considered for second reading. Public hearing final passage on October 17th at 7 o'clock. 27 18, ordinance of Township of Mars, authorizing the mayor and clerk to execute a first amendment to that certain redevelopment agreement between our Colgate Urban Renewal Development LLC as successor by assignment to JMFRD New Jersey Properties. Residential urban renewal for the redevelopment of Block 104103 in accordance with local redevelopment law. 28 18, North Township, Marsh, North New Jersey, approving the First Amendment to financial agreement for tax exemptions 
of Lunar Hall Gator Renewal Development and Successor by Assignment to JMF RD and J Properties or Renewal LLC for the redevelopment of Block 104, 103 in accordance with the long term tax exemption law. 29-18, Ordinance of Township Marston County Water Supposed to have Marion Park to execute a First Amendment to that certain redevelopment agreement and amended declaration of covenant with JMFRD New Jersey Properties Urban Renewal LLC for the redevelopment of Block 104 on Lot 3.01 in accordance with the local redevelopment housing law. Lastly, 30-18, Ordinance of Township Morris County Marsh, New Jersey approving the First Amendment to financial agreement for tax exemption of JMFRD New Jersey Properties Urban Renewal LLC for the redevelopment of Block 104 on 3.01 in accordance with the long-term tax exemption law. So we need a motion for We have a motion to uh, <coughs> introduce <coughs> all four of the ordinances, yes. please. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second? Second. Uh, yes. Mrs. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Sisler is absent. Mr. Nunn? Yes. Mr. Nunn's ordinance? Yes. For public hearing. hearing. As indicated, I'm only going to Mr. Quinn. 2518, entitled the Ordinance of the Township of Morris County Morris, authorizing the mayor and clerk to execute a First Amendment to that certain redevelopment agreement with JMFRD and Total Housing Over Renewal for the redevelopment of Block 104 on Lots 3.03 and 3.04 in accordance with the local development and housing law. I'll open the uh, meeting uh, to the public. Anyone can be heard of Ordinance number 2518. Seeing no one, ask for a motion, please. So moved. Second. Is this to close and adopt, or is this just to uh, close? This is to what? Well, just to adopt it. Yeah, okay. Public session. Okay. Close the public session. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And now motion. So we to adopt and second. Second. We'd have to come from Ms. Wilson. That is your answer. Ah, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Arvanides? Yes. Mrs. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Mayor Mancuso? Yes. I like Peter Mancuso, Mayor, declare the ordinance adopted and finally passed, approved the same and directed the court, published proper notice thereof in the newspaper and record the ordinance in the proper place. Mr. Mills? 2618. Yes, sir. An ordinance of the Tax of Morris, County Morris, New Jersey, approving the First Amendment to financial agreement for tax exemption of JMF Verde Affordable Housing Urban Renewal. LLC for the redevelopment of Block 1041, a portion of Block 3, in accordance with the long term tax exemption law. Okay. I'll open the meeting to the public. Anyone care to be heard in ordinance number 2618, final passage? Brian Holm, 26 North Bridge Place. Um, because I haven't followed this really, really closely, but what is the tax exemption and what's the impact? to us because much of the things we've heard over the past years are, well, it adds to our abatables, we get more tax income, it's better for the town. So I understand this goes on all the time. How long is the exemption? Is it only our affordable? What, could somebody explain that? Why don't we allow it? Okay, it's all on top. Um, yes, so the exemption lasts 30 years, which is traditional, that's how most, most towns do it. What you have to do is think of it in terms of what is there now, which is nothing. You're getting no income, nothing. The town's getting nothing when the property was there in town. So in order to encourage the developer to come in and redevelop it and clean it up so that it can be used. And with the bonus, with this one, is getting affordable housing. That's helping the township address their constitutional obligation to provide affordable housing. The town has come up with this agreement with the, um, the owners, with, with the property owners. It does phase in. It begins at a very low amount, and then it phases in over time to a higher amount. Um, the way each one is structured slightly differently. The one that was just that's on for adoption this evening, the um, affordable housing, it starts with 10% um, of what's called the adjusted gross revenue, but it also has a caveat that it can't be less than in the beginning. It's 20% of what the actual property taxes would be, and then as the edge 20%, it can't be less in the very beginning what the tax that we receive we would, we would receive if we didn't have the financial agreement. And as you go forward, it goes up. So then it goes to it can't be less than 40% of what the actual taxes would be. And then it can't be less than 60%, and then it can't be less than 80%. And then by the time you get to the end, you're the full tax. And again, the, the idea of it is to incentivize the developer to go in and put all those upfront costs to clean up the property and to build something that the township you know, wants and needs versus necessarily 
what they might have you know, preferred to have done. Um, and also to include the affordable housing units, which are not going to create as much demand constraint for them as you know, regular, regular rates would. Um, so I think it's a very beneficial agreement that they've come to with this developer. It's my understanding that as long as that this is um, an uninformed guess, but as long as that building stood and Colgate owned it, they were paying taxes. But it's definitely at a reduced rate. But what if it's not being used and not being rented? Sure. There's, there's, there's a value to a structure, but it's very low when it's not being used okay. and when the property is contaminated. So there is something, but it's much more minimal compared to this. And those numbers were considered when these agreements were made. It was, you know, that was weight. Um, do these tax, tax exemptions apply also to the commercial and the, um, the there were three aspects of it? There's they the do. They apply, they apply to each section slightly differently um, because the situation is different. An office building has a different income stream and the, the, the market rate residentials have different income streams. But it's the same principle where there's a, it starts at a lower amount to encourage the development and over the 30 years it becomes a higher percentage and then after 30 years it's more taxes. Anyone else in the public here to be heard? Sure. Um, Eve Goldberg, 10 Hour Henry, just a quick question on the development. I heard you had reference to the market rate section as the presidential section. Is that correct? Market rate residential. Oh, market rate residential. So there's, okay. two, there's two residential sections. One has affordable housing in it and one only has market rate. So we've kind of distinguished it. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for clarifying. Jeannie McKay, 10 Walnut Street, Morristown. Um, you just mentioned that the land was contaminated. It had been back late, uh, and I don't, I haven't read the report like, lately, I don't remember what it was, but way back, Colgate, almost every manufacturing facility in the state had something. Even farms have some kind of contamination because they have phosphorus on them. Um, so I, I can't testify, I'm sorry, I can review that for this evening as to what it was, but it is part of the benefit that the town got out of this project was having to develop a clean up the site and it had to go through all the NJD approvals to certify that it was clean before it could be done. Because I remember, I don't, I don't remember which month, but we were at one of these meetings and we asked um, if it was contamination there and we were told no. Well, not no longer. Well, what did they do to clean it up? Again, I'm sorry, I did not, I did not read that agreement before I came to see I don't recall that. So how do we find out that information? Um, they are in LSRP and all the records are with New Jersey DEP. But it's a long, long time ago. It's not been recent. Well, how long ago? They just tore it down last year. Well, many, many years ago when they had it, they had contamination from the other side of the street that was coming on the ground that had to be addressed also. Anyone else care to be heard from the public? If not, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, and entertain a motion to accept uh, and, and adopt. Adopt uh, ordinance number 2618. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All right. All, 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 yes. Mrs. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Nunn. Mr. Mayor Mancuso. Yes. I mm -hmm. Peter Mancuso, Mayor, declared the ordinance adopted and finally passed. Approve the same and direct that the clerk publish proper notice thereof in the newspaper and to report the ordinance in the proper place. Thank you very much. Thank you, you ma'am.